Ubud is one of those places you dream of as a traveler. A seemingly mysterious, far-off world that has made its way into the top of most travelers' bucket list. But some dreams just aren't based in reality. Those who have been to Ubud know it's quite different from what you see online. People tend to create high expectations for travelers who then end up being disappointed. All your reality is hitting me so hard. So, over the next few days, we'll be visiting the most popular waterfalls, sleeping in a bamboo tree house, and trying the insta-famous flower bath and floating breakfast to find out for ourselves if they're really worth the hype. What are you supposed to do after you get in these things? Please, somebody, help. Good morning from Ubud, where today we're starting our day with the Monkey Forest Sanctuary. So we're probably expecting a lot of monkeys to be climbing all over us very, very soon. Yep, you have to take off your watch, your necklaces, make sure your phones are not in within <laughs> reach because they will take it. But this is one of the things I'm most excited about and we're doing it first. forest is incredibly beautiful and not only does it have temples and a lot of monkeys but there is another reason that so many people come here why do so many people come here the babies the babies <laughs> okay no actually you can actually take a picture with the monkeys and it looks like they're actually taking the picture for you <laughs> super cool but you do have to pay 50,000 rupiah for your monkey selfie which is like the monkey taking the picture for you yeah it's really funny the way they do it they actually have the monkey's sitting on your lap and then they have food behind the camera and so when they reach out to grab the food it actually looks like there's yeah. a selfie so we'll see if we actually get a good one here what do you think i think so i think we're gonna keep trying <laughs> Sorry, I just get really, really excited because they had a little baby. That's my favorite one. It's my favorite one. Can they see it? <laughs> well, that was freaking awesome. And the guards just really help you out. They want you to get that good picture. So that was so awesome. One thing that you should know about the monkey forest is that it is very well known. So it's very typical to see a lot of people here. The further you go in, sometimes you can find some space to yourself versus just hanging out right where the entrance is. You can definitely spend multiple hours here, but we've got places to be, so we gotta get going. <laughs> On to the next one. Our second stop of the day and our first waterfall ever in Bali is the Suwat Waterfall. We've got our 15,000 rupee passes and we're just gonna go check it out. Let's go. Bali's waterfalls are world renowned and our hopes were high that Suwat Waterfall would be as beautiful as people say. Alright, so we were down at this first waterfall and kind of as expected, it's, uh, there's a lot of people here. It's very beautiful and it's behind us, but typically in Bali you do have a lot of people that come to these waterfalls. And Ellie is about to get on a raft and go out in this water. So hopefully I can get some good shots of her. This is just kind of what happens when you come to places like this. <laughs> has this cool statue and since this is our first waterfall in Bali it's gonna rank number one for us so far overall it was a beautiful waterfall but the water is super mm. murky so it's really hard to get those good shots it was just like really brown water but still pretty Abud is not just known for waterfalls and rice fields there's also a lot of culture that's involved in this area especially music and dance and we saw something at the parking lot that's pretty cool we'll show you it in just a second 
Do you want to go play? There's a spot in the back. Can she play? Can you go in the back and play? You have, you have to say good or bad for her. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So we are on to our second waterfall of today, the Tibu Mana Waterfall. Just like the other one, it's a quick walk down and then it opens up into a beautiful waterfall. And we're kind of expecting more people at this one. Hopefully with more people means more beauty. So we'll see what we get. With murky water still on our mind, we follow the crowds down a steep path towards our second ever Bali waterfall. We actually found out later that this waterfalls and others like it are 100% man-made, which is why they look so perfect. This might be the most picture-perfect waterfall we've ever seen. It honestly looks man-made. Like, the way that the water falls is so evenly and it's just, it really is a beautiful waterfall. That waterfall was absolutely gorgeous, but I think the other one beats it because of its vibe. This one, there's a lot of people, it's more open space, so you know, you gotta give and take a little bit, but this one was pretty cool. And also this waterfall had a big landslide come through it about a year ago. There were no tourists here when it actually happened, but because of it, there's much less space to actually walk on down there. So it makes it feel even more crowded than it once was. I wanted to be Mexican street corn so bad. Mm. Okay, oh, that's spicy. So we just arrived at our third waterfall today, the Canto Lampo waterfall. And you know the drill. We pay for our tickets and then we have a walk down some beautiful steps to get to a probably crowded waterfall. Now this one, from the pictures alone, is definitely the one I've been looking forward to the most. So let's see if it meets our expectations. Oh, your reality is hitting me so hard. So I think I was right about two things. One, this is the most beautiful. I'm pointing in Ellie's face. This is the most beautiful and also definitely the most crowded. Lots of people here waiting to take pictures. I think it is like peak hours, but you know, <laughs> I don't blame them. Like it's beautiful. Hopefully we'll get our turn to go up there. I forgot what time it was, but it is now 3.55 and Ellie had all the fun while I took pictures of her. So I hope she really liked it. There are so many people. We waited 30 minutes to get pictures and it just really brings that expectations versus reality to Bali. Even the water is edited on Instagram. Everything is edited. People don't show how many people are actually here. And for us, it's just really different than what we've seen on Instagram and it's really hard to see it in person. Changu, there are a couple different options you have. You can take scooters, like behind me, except it's quite far away. It's actually over an hour to get here, and then in between each waterfall is another 30 minutes driving through the back roads of Bali. Or you can take a private car like us. It only costs us 40 US dollars a day, and you can go to any place that you want. 
Also, our driver is super awesome, super friendly. Everyone here has been super friendly, but we highly recommend getting a private car. And what Ellie said about going wherever you want is so important because if you wanted to do a day tour from Chenggu, you can expect to pay about $100 each um, for tickets to go to places just like this. Yeah, so find your own itinerary and let's go. <laughs> Last waterfall of today, Tukad Sepung, and you know the drill. Time to get some tickets, walk down some stairs, and hope there's not many people at a beautiful waterfall. We'll see how it goes again. So honestly, this place is such a relief to come to after the past three waterfalls we've been to. There is nobody here, and we think a good reason for that is because it closes in 40 minutes and it's known for light rays coming through and hitting the waterfall. Obviously, we're not here in the correct time of day to take pictures, but honestly, this is already my favorite one and it's not even close. All right, so we've come to the main waterfall and it is unbelievable. I can't capture any of it on this camera because it's too dark. It's at the end of the day here. So we're doing our best to see what we can salvage from LA phone. This place is definitely better during the day. <laughs> so even with my initial reaction being that this was the best waterfall we've been to because there was nobody here, there turned out to be quite a bit of people here. Even if it was really dark and this is not the ideal time, you can still find a lot of people here. It's just that cool of a waterfall. It really did impress us though. It was super, super nice. So definitely worth coming, but I would definitely come during the day. Since it's getting dark and we've seen so many waterfalls, it's time to head to our bamboo tree house. This is one of the most hyped up places. We'll give you a full tour of our bamboo tree house. And tomorrow we're also going to check out more of Bali's most Instagramable places to see if they're even worth it. So a lot in store. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, it's a new dawn, it's a new day, and I'm feeling good. Me too. <laughs> we are in search of a secluded waterfall. And by secluded, we just mean a little bit less touristy, like a little bit less people. Oh, mosquitoes. <laughs> I have mosquito repellent. Always bring mosquito repellent. And so what we did today was instead of having a driver, we have our rental bike right behind us here. And we actually drove in on this one kilometer road that was pretty much in the middle of nowhere. And we're hoping that this waterfall is going to be empty. All right, even though there's not many people here, you know the drill. We get our tickets, we walk down the stairs, and we really hope that we finally find a waterfall with nobody here. Cross your fingers. This is uh, a lot more our style already. Um, we have the local guy who met us at the entrance and who we paid to get in, and he's leading us down through this unbelievably beautiful and lush ravine to hopefully a waterfall over here. And wow, I'm bright. So we just got walked all the way down to this waterfall and that walk was absolutely gorgeous. And then you get to this waterfall with nobody here. Like, it's one of the best waterfalls I've ever seen. It's truthfully beautiful. And the fact that it's no one here and it's your nature winner for sure. Well, this spot officially just got a lot better because there's not one, but a second waterfall. Completely to ourselves. Behind me is Christie's waterfall number one. The first one we saw was number two. The other one is definitely a lot better, but still nobody here, and it's in a beautiful location. So 100% worth coming. And he's got our bag. <laughs>
finally my first Bali swing. I'm an influencer. <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> She's not using one of the dresses that they gave her, so I, I feel like her butt's gonna be out. <laughs> Terrace swings are a rite of passage for any traveler, but honestly, the workers here were so fun and made this experience so special, regardless of our expectations. I was just worried my bum was gonna show to everybody. Truthfully, that was like my biggest worry. <laughs> I should have put on a fake dress. So even uh, besides the swing, this is just uh, quite a magical place to walk around. As Ellie said, all of her Bali dreams are coming true today. <laughs> Finally got the waterfall without people and she got her coveted swing pictures. Amazing. Just amazing. So we have to come clean about one thing. This is not the actual rice terrace that we were intending to come to. It just said parking for rice terrace and we went in because we knew we only had a couple of minutes before sunset. It is absolutely beautiful behind us but we might have to go to the one that starts with the T. I I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. But we might try to have to do that one tomorrow. Good morning from the rice fields just outside of Ubud where today we're still continuing our three days exploring this amazing area, trying to find out what's real and what's just Instagrammable. We've spent the past two nights here at a tree house in Ubud, and we're about to show you what it's really like. We've got the living space right here, and then our bathroom. We've got a really nice bamboo bathroom here with hot shower and running water. What more can you ask for? And upstairs. We've got our lovely bedroom here with a nice mosquito net. You need that in a tree house. And we've got our own little balcony. Really nice open air tree house. Overlooking the beautiful rice fields. It has been amazing to wake up here and just see this and truly be in nature. I do, I do love the idea of the Ubu tree house and I don't think that it's an overhyped thing in, on Instagram. And to prove it's a tree house, they put a tree right in the middle of the bamboo hut. So our two nights here, I think we spent about 90 USD, which is including the cleaning fee, and it was an amazing, beautiful stay where we got to be right in the middle of these rice fields. And, oh, I think I can hear the rain coming on top of us right now, so um, it's time for us to move on and see what else there is to see here in Bali. In contrast to our about $45 a night bamboo tree house, we are at one of the most famous resorts here in Ubud called Maya. We just walked in, it is absolutely gorgeous and amazing. And the price for it just tonight would be $3,000 per night. However, if you were to book in advance, it's something like $250. Still, very, very different price point. And we're here to do one of Ellie's favorite things in the whole world. <laughs> We are having a picnic here at Maya Obud, and if you can't stay at the resort, make sure to check out the experiences they have, like a picnic. This picnic was honestly such a breath of fresh air, just to sit and relax instead of just another crowded waterfall. And the food was actually so delicious. We chose the Indo menu, which was a ton of assorted traditional Indonesian food. And then he just kept pulling out different things. Yeah, it's just so much food. <laughs> <laughs> so after experiencing so many things in just three days here in Ubud, there's still one really important thing that we can't miss out on before we leave this area of Bali. That's right, on our final day here in Ubud, we are finally trying the infamous floating breakfast, the flower bath, and we're having our own private villa with beautiful rice terrace views. But before we get to the floating breakfast and the rose petal pool, let's just show you around our villa. We have one night in this beautiful private antique villa behind me, so let's go check it out. 
here we've got this beautiful spacious bedroom and they've put out some beautiful flowers and some swans. And my favorite part of this villa is the outside, of course. We've got our own private pool facing the beautiful rice terrace. Look at that, <laughs> it's amazing. Flower petal baths are one of the most viral and sought after experiences in Bali, and we were so excited to try ours. However, I'm not sure we really understood what bathing in thousands of flower petals would entail. What's that? An ant. You saw an ant. Ah! So I'm cold, I'm covered in roses, and I don't really know what to do now. Ellie's been in for a while, and I'm gonna go join her. But you might notice what's right behind me here. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the toilet. What are you supposed to do after you get in these things? <gasps> caterpillar! Caterpillar! Oh sh! don't look at the water. There's like stems and stuff down there. <laughs> so bugs, flowers, tub. Would you do it again? Absolutely not. Why would they ever put like flowers in a tub? Like now what, what are you supposed to do after? <laughs> like you have a bunch of wet flowers in a cold tub and now you can't take a real bath. Should you do this in Bali? Not unless the view is spectacular and you've got like a really awesome location. But for us, a budget option wouldn't do this toilet. again. <laughs> <laughs> behind us. So we got a nice candlelit dinner set up behind us and it is absolutely stunning gorgeous. They did such an amazing job at setting up a flower heart, some candles, and it's right in our private villa. Yeah, it's right here. Some incense burning to hopefully keep the bugs away that were in the flower bath, but. <laughs> yeah, I think this will be a good romantic moment. Absolutely. For our last morning in Abud, we only had one thing left on our Bali bucket list. The legendary floating breakfast in our private villa pool. The expectation is that this is the ultimate way to have breakfast. But is that really the truth? Would you do this again? No. You wouldn't do this again? No. It's like $10. Is it $10? I would do this again. I think this is really cool, especially if you're in Bali or on vacation. It gives such a cool vibe to your breakfast, and it makes breakfast more of an experience rather than a meal. So I've never had a floating breakfast, but I've also never been able to pee while I'm eating my breakfast. <laughs> oh, God. I did that earlier. You did that already? Yeah. The review said the breakfast was bad, but I think they're just mad. And they probably didn't get good pictures. I think Blake likes the floating breakfast. <laughs> I just like breakfast. I don't need it to be floating. I don't know, for $12 for breakfast, I'm gonna do this one again. And it gets a thumbs up for me for expectations versus reality. <laughs> No. Yes, it does. When you come to Bali, you definitely expect these beautiful hidden waterfalls. Nobody but yourself and your camera. But unfortunately, you do get places like Canto Lampo where you're waiting for 30 minutes or more to get a picture and then you leave because it's not the heaven you were expecting. However, we were able to find waterfalls like Krisik Waterfall where there was nobody and it was such a treasure to find. So definitely can find those type of places but most of them were crowded and underwhelming. So if you like this video and you wanna hear our real thoughts on what these experiences are like, please subscribe and hit that like button and comment to let us know what you thought of this video. So, so we'll, we'll see, see you next time, time on today's, today's adventure. adventure. Bye. Bye.